Hello, 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 everyone. I'm Tom Obarski, and welcome to Drop Frame. Today, we're going to be tackling some DIY upgrades to take your stream from looking and sounding like this to this. <laughs> Better, right? So, I bought about $100 worth of stuff off of Amazon. And box. Box of stuff. Bunch of junk. Not a junk. It's, it's decent. Cheap end consumer stuff. But we're going to be combining that with some other odds and ends that I have lying around the house to repurpose a DSLR camera and this microphone that I'm not really using anymore uh, to make this place look and sound a lot better. And hopefully you can find something here that you can use to improve your own YouTube filming or Twitch streaming setup. Let's start with the audio because I would say that having a great video, at least from a production quality standpoint, is 70% about having great audio. Uh, I'm sure in here, you can hear fan over here because it's kind of warm, street noise from out there. Uh, this is a shared living space. And by shared living space, I mean, I have kids running around up and down the hallways at all hours of the day and night. They're stomping by the door. You don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. So let's upgrade our audio. What we have here is an old blue Yeti Pro mic that hasn't been getting much love. And the reason it hasn't been getting much love is because Mac Pros don't take USB plugs anymore. So that brings us to our first thing from our box of Amazon goodies are just simple USB-C adapters. You can do a lot. Your old gear still works with new equipment. You just need to convert it. Um, the particular ones that I picked, of course, they're nice and pretty and match the casing of my computer, but also you can get them to fit side by side next to your headphone jack. All three in those three ports right there, which most converters and stuff have giant plugs on them that don't actually allow for that. So uh, let's just hook that up. And you should already notice a world of difference. Check, 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 check. Oh, so much better. You can't hear that fan anymore. It's great. That's like 70% of our work done right there. How easy is that? With this Blue Yeti, this is what they call a condenser microphone. It's got a very large capsule. I can be kind of mumbly sometimes. There's also dynamic microphones, which you see more people have for podcasting. Yeah, real up close, right on top of the mic. Sounds great, eliminates all kinds of background noise but I, I don't always have that ability to be right up there with a the mic in front of my mouth and kind of in front of my eyes too. It can be a bit of a pain. So those are the two main types. You can also get more fancy, have stuff with integrated compressors right into it. Mics have changed a lot in the last couple of years for the better, I think. It's making everything more accessible, but this is what I've got. And so we already sound way better. So after upgrading your microphone and getting your audio sorted, the next step should be tackling your video. Webcams right now are at a premium because of uh, production output being restricted because of points wildly at all of 2020. So normally like $70 to $80 webcams like the Logitech C920 are going for nearly $150 now and their 4K version, the Brio, normally retails for like $150 to $200. It's up to like $250 on Amazon. Basically just add $50 to whatever it should cost and that's where we are now. That's unrealistic. I don't believe in overpaying for things. In fact, I think if you can get by with something cheaper, you're better off. Shout out to my friend Erin who had a spare Nikon 5200 lying around. Um, she goes by Erin Moriarty on YouTube where she does Sims character building and commentary videos. You can find a link to her channel on our featured channel listing or in the description below. We're going to hook this up to our stream, which brings us to Amazon goodie number two. Super standard looking USB cable, run of the mill. Looks like janky like you plug a 90s phone into it for whatever reason Nikon decided to go with this proprietary USB format and so I didn't have one I had to buy one it's like 10 bucks but it's gonna do wonders for us with the new USB cord that brings us to another USB-C adapter this is why we got two so we've got our proprietary USB-C cable plugged into a USB-C converter next we're also gonna need a tripod which is actually the most expensive thing that I got from this Amazon dump. This is the newer like desk tripod. It lists like if you just search for the tripod by name for like $60, but somehow I was able to find a package that also came with 
this Bluetooth shutter remote, which you can hook up to a phone, and as well as this phone clamp, which I'm not gonna use on this tripod, but I am gonna use on another video next week where we're gonna try and like come up with some creative lighting solutions for this room. And the reason I went with this uh, ball head instead of the regular fluid head mount with the stick on the back and everything, like I said, I don't have a lot of wall space back there, so that'll keep things more compact. Yeah, we can just raise the center pole up. That should fit nicely behind the laptop screen. Yeah, perfect. Don't forget to take the lens cap off. That's day one of film school. What we're gonna do with this is a little program called QDSLR Dashboard. It's like the only one that works for Mac. There's some better ones for PC. You can do some research. It'll be fine, I promise. Just clip your uh, little USB link and here we go. I look like garbage right now, but it's pretty smooth. Hey folks, Tom the Editor here. Quick little uh, cut into the video here. Turns out the QDSLR just wasn't working out. The sync looks really great inside of the software itself, but once you make that into a window mode and everything to get it into OBS, it was just garbage. So in the spirit of keeping this video about hacking together things, doing things off cheap, I picked up this no name brand, basically uh, Elgato Camlink replacement, which I'll be doing a full review on next week. But spoiler alert, oh, it does have some drawbacks from the Elgato Camlink, such as uh, it can only do 1080p and it can only do that at 30 frames a second due to its limited USB 2.0 interface for $16? Like a tenth of the price of the Elgato? This thing is pretty solid, um, and I've used it on my streams for the last couple of days. So it gets a thumbs up from me, and back to the video. And that brings us to our last bit of this whole little puzzle, is just upgrading the lighting. Like this is flat, it's bland, the room is what it is, but, but we can do better. Some of the like DIY around the house things that you can do, like everyone's got lights, you've got a bedside lamp, you've got like desk lamps, you can use these things to make your stream look better. So my last Amazon goodie, I got this little clip-on USB powered light and ta-da, it's got adjustable color control. It's got adjustable brightness, down, 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 up, up, up. Let's move into, that's white, that's yellow, boo. Mixed color. So we've got just this little, it's got a little switch to power the lights behind us. Ta-da! Isn't that amazing? This is a very warm bulb. So I will probably try to find something a little less warm and it is throwing off a shit ton of light. If this was my key light, ah, no thank you. Too bright, too hot. So. In order to clean this up, we're going to take coffee filter. Ta-da! Diffuse the crap out of that. Get that nice and tight across there. And that's gonna provide some nice backlighting before and after. See, it's throwing a little bit of light back into the room, but this is what DIY is all about, just like pressing buttons until some shit works, honestly. Thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe down below. It means a lot to first time YouTubers just starting out. If you found anything useful in here, thank you. Um, they say to always make videos and, and write blogs and stuff for whoever you were like two weeks ago. And two weeks ago, I was just starting out. So this would have helped me then. This is the result of all my research over the last two weeks and Follow me on twitch.tv slash editor Tom. It's a terrible name. I know it's going to change. I had to pick something when I first signed up. I regretted it instantly. Twitch makes it wait two months. It's a whole thing. And thanks for watching. Bye.